Collection Connection, comics, toys, movies. This is a TV show review, though. It's going to be three parts. This review is for episodes one and two, and we'll work it out from there. This show is for Radioactive Curry. It is Guns of Gulab. So, let's see. In the cartel-run town of Gulab Gunj. An opium deal pulls a big city police officer and a lovesick mechanic into its chaotic clutches. Uh, 2003, so it's brand new. Starring Adrash Gurav, TJ Bahanu, Dolquir Salomon, and a bunch of other people. 3.9 out of six, 614 ratings from the audience reviews. 7.7 .7 on IMDb. IMDb. 84% on Rotten Tomatoes, 4 out of 5 from the Times of India, 87% of Google users like this show. So let's see, this is on Netflix, and we're doing episodes 1 and 2. Episode 1, after his father's death, lovelorn mechanic Tipu takes a drastic step. The arrival of police officer Arjun Varma causes a stir. A high-stakes deal is afoot. And in episode two, when his family is threatened, Arjun is faced with a messy problem. Ganchi's gang suffers a sudden blow. The assassin, Atamaram, takes aim at Tipu. All right. Lots of moving parts on this one. It's got the fuzzy, lovable. He's, he's still on a page out of your book. He's got the, what, it was the cuddly, lovable mechanic guy who edges on Psycho. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's his bloodline is Psycho. Bloodline. Right? Yeah. Bad guy with a mullet. Homies. Okay. Little I kids. Wanna, bunch I of stuff in between. Mullet, dude is badass, dude. Like, I, as much as I want to hate him as a bad guy, I was like, I can see a movie just with that guy, dude. Because he's fucking... That kill... That... When in the way they explained it, I was like, I like that, dude. Like, I was like, that was very, very Tarantino ish, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, he had, he had like a stop, like this man. I, mean, I this. guess he'd and, be like the sticky bandits. Well, no, he was more like, <laughs> he, he was more like, um, uh, like if, if Constantine, when he went to kill a demon, like had to like fucking do the cross, you know what I mean? To like make, like, he it was like there was like a reason for the way he did it and the way they explained it. I was kind of like, Oh shit. And then when he does it in the second episode, I was like, Whoa! that guy got fucked up. Like the first time I saw it, I was just like, oh, he just jujitsu, you know, stabbed the guy kind of thing. But then yeah, when they explained like it. could have been random at first. Right, exactly. But I was like, but it, at this point, and then all of a sudden when the guy explained it, I was like, oh shit, write that down. Write that down. I like that. I like that. Write that down. That, that, cause it was, that was real clever. But lots of lots of different levels, right? It's got the school kids. The school kids have an interesting story, and that ties in with them witnessing uh, was it Tipu's dad being killed? Yeah, the gangster that he doesn't care for. The schoolgirl steals a kid's spot. She's the daughter of the police chief, who's like a full like like a philanderer cheating on his wife, who's caught up with these opium things. And uh, just and you think he's gonna be like the straight edge guy because he gives that awesome speech to that fucking guy, like the the other the other cartel leader, like you can't buy me, you know what I mean? Like he was like strong about it, and then all of a sudden this shit happens. You're like, oh fuck, everyone can be bought, I guess, bitch. <laughs> you, you can't you can't buy me, but you can blackmail him. Jeez. Exactly. So yeah, lots of different levels. Uh, Lots of places for it to go. I think there's a lot of potential with this show. I think it's well written. Um, what are your thoughts on this one, JD? Uh, well, uh, Fuzzy kind of mentioned it a, a moment ago, and I think you did too. That this movie has like some like Tarantino, Guy Ritchie vibes to it. Uh, certainly, one of the things that because you're talking about all the different storylines that are occurring, um, I was thinking of uh, of the movie Snatch specifically, where you have all these disparate groups of people doing their thing and like slowly the storylines start to mesh together and form like one cohesive narrative toward the end so it has that kind of a feel for it but because we're dealing with a television show 
obviously it's going to take longer for that to develop than in a you know two hour movie format so um i thought it was interesting that way i was uh surprised by some of the twists and turns that it took you know with uh tipu uh having the same like you know hardcore like murder and uh capability that his father had because he comes across as you know like you said this happy-go-lucky illiterate motorcycle repairman you know just innocent happy you know loving life and trying to get the <coughs> girl that he loves and then you know people uh people wrong him and he just straight, <laughs> straight up like murders them like jason Bourne, just chasing them down the street to get rid of them it's crazy with um, a wrench right yeah. yeah that was that was what blew me he away stopped him with the <laughs> <laughs> so and then you know you have the story with uh with the, the police officer and everything like you said he seems like the stand-up guy but clearly he's got some bad stuff in his past i don't i didn't get the impression that he's currently cheating on his wife but that it probably happened sometime beforehand and so that past is now coming back to haunt him um and then i don't know if you guys picked up on it but did you did you notice when the uh the hired killer guy like when he killed tipu's buddy that like his eyes glowed red or no wait no wait that was when he was talking to the street vendor guy the street vendor that gave him the the necklace the charm and he like yeah. looked at him and his like eyes glowed for a second did you pick that up uh -uh. I, okay. I caught it i caught it There's i caught some, it right then and i didn't think about it afterwards there was some there was some supernatural stuff going on there i'm not quite sure what to make of that but there's like all these different elements that are are being woven and you're like how is this all going to come together and then of well, course, I like, the, I crime like the, boss thing, scene. the crime boss thing, you know, I, I'm sure you guys saw it coming when they're building his stairs and it's like super, <laughs> super shitty. And then he gets up it there. It was awesome. I should have gone with the Redwood or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the teeth? I, 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 I laughed yeah, out loud at that one. I, I LOL big time at that scene. I went, ah, he fell. And now his, now his wuss son is going to be the one who takes over, you know, all he does is like lay around all day and drink and. Like, and he's got like skater nothing. banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it all comes together. What about now, it's you, a trip, Liz? right? Because they've, it's, it's once again we're Western people and we see these Indians, but there's clearly like they're they're on the border of some other province or something because there's like something going on between what was it it's the, the Capulets uh, and the Montagues? Right? That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it felt like, and it was like that, that in the middle of the bar. <laughs> Right, like that. Also, like, those are the two opium dealers. Those are the right, two gang lords, right, and right. one's not allowed to cross into the other's territory, type thing. But it, it, this bar. You guys heard the story about like the James Bond thing, like how the real Casino Royale in real life, where Ian Fleming would go, was a neutral place. So there would be Nazi fucking spies there. There'd be American spies there. There'd be French spies there, hanging out, drinking, because it was neutral. So I was shit always fascinating me. And I was like, this is what this must have been like. Like everyone's standing there like, go ahead, fucking say something. Dude. I'll step outside and whoop the shit out of you. Like the Continental and shit and John Wick. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. you come in here, you put your guns away. Everything's cool. No matter if you have beef with that person or not. Dude. Like, you know, and that's why I like when the dude came out with the shotgun. And was all, <laughs> that stupid son, he's the, he started that shit too. Cause he like, doesn't he put like a soda? Some, yeah, the soda in the gas tank, and that's was what it soda? To, oh, that was after the fight, or alcohol, or whatever. He's just like, okay, I'm leaving, and then he goes and pours it in, and that's why those two guys those got two killed. Guys by got killed. <laughs> he set that all up. Yeah. Well, no, he was. He was. I was like the whole the the part that got me wanting to watch it. The weirdest thing, like, and I felt afterwards, like at first, because I was kind of like, "What the hell is this, dude? Like, where what are we watching now? Like, where's the guns? You know, this and that." But it was the kid's story about him being in love with the teacher, and he fucking switched the note, and it, and he gave it to the you know the girl. Yeah. She's driving off. She's like, fuck it. and he's like, you know, because he's illiterate, he can't tell. She's like, what the fuck? Like, what was in the letter? And when all this shit's going on throughout the episode, he just keeps coming back to it. Did did it smell bad or? <laughs> I think my favorite part of that whole like situation is when they finally catch up with the fact that the kids did that. Like the punishment, he's got him like standing up on the wall with yeah, their hands it's... up. He's like, okay. get back on that. Just get the back The director, the, the director, look, I can probably got his hair standing up on his arm. 
the director fucked me up over a stupid 90s song that I've heard a gazillion times watching Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves and the kids yeah. riding, you know what I mean? And you, and literally like the way that the kid's looking and the kid's got his hands up and he just, look into your heart and he looks up like that. I was like, oh shit, dude, this kid's feeling that poor thing and then cuts to everyone else, you know, and I'm like, oh, this stupid song. I get into the car, I'm driving, I swear to God, to turn on fucking Coast 103 Everything I do, <laughs> tears come back out my eyes. I was like, this stupid <laughs> fucking So kudos to the director for that, dude. He, he fucked fuzzy up with that stuff, dude. Get on the wall. It gets on the wall. <laughs> what do you, put your hands up. <laughs> he, he just starts right. leaning on the wall, upset and stuff. And he gets to put his hands up, he's just like. So know, let's, we're, 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 we're two in on this. You know, there is the conflict between the kids, uh, the boys versus the girl uh, sh in the class. It seems like she's got it out for the boys. I'm totally curious as where that's going to go. Um, I'm curious as to where, as, of course, the mechanic, it's, it's, it's basically his thing. Uh, he's probably, I, I, I say he's going to level up in his bad and, uh, have a boss fight with Mr. Mullet, or at least a mid boss fight. Maybe he goes up. I just don't see how it it brings all of it together. Yeah, I think that the officer I'm, is he he's he's got something going on. They 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 got him. I'm calling our hero, our our Jason Bourne. He's gonna take over the fucking thing. He's gonna take it over somehow. Or like who's something. gonna be the new guy? The, our Jason Tipu. Bourne here, Tipu. I think he's going to do it because, because so we, you know, we love the kid scene where he's where the, he finds out the kid fucks him over, right? And he's got his hand. That's his punishment to the kid. You know what I'm saying? Then, then you have what happened with the guys that he found out killed his father. So you're seeing the range of what is how he can kind of control it. So that's why it's like I think it's setting it up to show you like, look, this guy's going to be. The new boss and he's going to be different than all the other ones you know mm -hmm. like he's he's going to kind of run so i think something like that's going to happen i do believe we're going to see a fucking takedown with mullet man and i cannot wait dude i want to see what all this fucking shit dude i'm going to learn that dude i'm gonna fuck someone up that one day <laughs> like that dude like that and then, like that dude i got it i'm gonna you say come at me bro i have a spanner <laughs> 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 and, and like but the necklace scene was like even a dope scene like i like the way that happened like the way he was like he hid the melon and he just kind of walks up and he's like where was it and the guy said something to him was like, i'll put the melon in your ass and make it explode <laughs> 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 i was excited i'm telling you so like it's very t it's very you could tell whoever made this has watched a lot of American stuff. Like it's got that feel, like we were saying, like Tarantino, Guy Ritchie, like adding, the, like I said, the scene, like there's Guy Ritchie can take. A, well, it's, a song. Uh, it's, it's uh, directed by Raj and DK. And uh, they're the same, they're the same guys that brought us uh, Street. Mm. Oh, well, hey, dude, dude keep that's going, the, dude. And the, it's the same the, actor. Looks like. Yeah. 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 Tipu, Tipu yeah. was in Street also. Yeah, well, I was like, please mention that. Because like if you watch a guy, if you watch uh, Layer Cake, uh, if you watch Daniel it, Craig, seen Daniel Craig, and, and uh, it's Guy Ritchie's producer. It's his first one he did. He's saying then he went on to make Kick Ass and all that stuff. He was able to take the song Ordinary World and make it like a fucking like a one of the most violent scenes I've ever heard. And if you listen to the words, you know it's very like calming and you know shit like that. But he's just beating this guy to death with it, and it's fucking beautiful. This guy made me cry with a song that I've heard a gazillion. I mean, we've all we grew up in the '90s. Every every dance we went to for our next ten years, fucking played the song. You I mean, know, that's, like we, that's what Guy Ritchie did in uh, Snatch with uh, Madonna's "Lucky Star" when he's choking yeah. that guy and driving down the street with him, <laughs> like interrogating yeah. him and playing "Lucky Star." Oh, I love this track. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, even even Baby Driver, you watch Baby Driver, you know what I mean? The whole fucking driving sequence. To me, like, that, to me, that's a movie. And I, I guess I'm a child of the 80s and we grew up on MTV and shit like that. So, like, but if you can take music 
and and a scene and like even dialogue in there and just make it all fucking work like oh dude fuzzy loves you that, that shitty movie shoot 'em up i love because of that they have heavy metal with fucking you know shootout scenes I'm like, i will yeah. say that i will say that uh, people are realizing that trope and taking advantage of it probably a little bit too much now it's starting to be uh its use as a plot device is getting more and more thin. But if they, but if you, it's still, if you do it right, if you do it right, right, you know, no, you, you have do to it do right, it right. Though. Yeah. That's now, I want to say, uh, I, good God, I can't remember the, good God. There was a recent one, there was a recent movie where they were trying to do that over and over in it. And it was just like, they, they didn't do it. They didn't. They didn't do it well, and uh, oh, the movie escapes me. The movie escapes me. The guy this was solid. This fucking yeah, it was great. It was very well done. I can't wait to see what else happens. For sure. So uh, next week we'll be back with episodes uh, three and four. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I almost I almost skipped ahead, but I was like, nope. We got to keep it legit, dude. I'm going to keep my promise and I'll wait for these. So I can't wait. Gonna watch if anybody's it watching it with us, uh, feel free to, to, to make your, uh, if you haven't seen it, I mean, if you've seen it, you can just say what happens or whatever. But if you have predictions mm-hmm. for what's going on in this, put them below. There's, there's a twist. Don't tell Fuzzy. Don't, don't tell Fuzzy. You can tell <laughs> these guys over here, but don't tell Fuzzy. When there's twists like that, I don't want to know, dude. Like, don't, don't tell me. Because either I, is the emotion is what I love, dude. Like, going, <gasps> or like, fuck you. And, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah getting caught, right? You don't want to, yeah. you don't want to know. No. Or sometimes it does feel good if, if it's like, I wonder if it's this. It would be very complicated if it was this. And then you got it. But when it's obvious and you get it, yeah, 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 for sure. When you guess it and it goes, you're like, yes, dude. But if it's like, oh, this is going to be this. And then, like, it ends up being that. You go, eh, yeah, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) All right. Guns and Gulab 3 and 4 next week. Check it out. Fuzzy, take us out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching us and always coming back and giving us good suggestions. And ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to have some love, some peace, and that Popeye's grease. We out. Ah.